Here's my next project. Found a double packer on Craigslist. I went to go pick it up and when I pulled in the guy asked me how I planned to load it. And I discovered he had four tractors with no loaders. Uh, luckily they're all held together with nuts and bolts and if you take enough nuts and bolts out the pieces become small enough that you can lift them. So an hour and a half later I had it disassembled enough and I loaded it in the trailer by hand. I'm going to go through it, uh, clean it all up, and put her back together. And I've got the hub that holds the two axles off the double packer right here. I'm going to go ahead and start taking this apart so I can check out what's inside and see what needs to be done. Go. You see they got the grease fitting on the outside here and then the whole inside's full of grease. You can see the bushings in there. Got flat sides and then the axle goes in the center. Same on both sides. I'm going to pull those out right now. Get those cleaned up. See if they're good enough to keep. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like this one's wood. Sometimes you find wooden ones in them. I pulled them out of the other end and the other side had cast iron ones in it. So I got one packer and one side's got wood in it and the other side's got steel in it. I've got the frame here. Some of the bolts are loose but they're so rusty I can't tighten them back up. You can see this one back here. Sometimes the best thing to do is just cut them all off and start over. That way you can square everything up and everything's tight. go. took me about an hour but I got everything apart. Now I'll put the wire brush on the grinder and clean all the rust off and we'll prime it, paint it, get some new bolts and put it back together. A good coat of primer on them and get the other side yet. Started cleaning up the end pieces, hit them with the wire brush on the grinder first, and then anything I couldn't get with that I went over by hand with the wire brush. Kind of interesting all the lettering they have on these. On the inside of this one, it looks like it's Dunite Metal. I don't know if that's the company that provided the steel. And then a number 163. This is patented right there, but I can't find a date. After I go over it with a wire brush, and I clean it real good with Prepsol, get all the grease and oil off, and then Rust-Oleum makes a primer for heavy rusted, and I've used that a few times in the past, and it's worked really well for me. I started cleaning the end pieces up, the hubs, where the bearings go by hand and they were just too gunked up so I broke down and took them to the sandblaster place up the road not too expensive you do it yourself they charge eighteen dollars an hour so it took me about a half hour but as you can see they're pretty much spotless all the grease is gone and all the rust is gone so it was worth it okay, I've got a washer on each one for a spacer and then the longer ones in the back. Slide that right up in there like that. 
hopefully this shows up. Um, remember it had the steel bushings in the front. Let's just slide in just like that. And they fit right in there to keep them from spinning. And we got a washer. And this is called a crown nut. You can see this one's deep, this one's medium, and this one's at the top. And the pin goes right through here. So you can put that on and then you turn it till it lines up tight. And we'll put a cotter pin right through there to hold that in place. Um, when I actually put it together, I'm gonna grease everything up good. I'll coat both sides of those bearings, the steel bushings and put those in. Um, I always like to make sure everything lines up on all four pieces before I do that. Uh, just so if you have to take something apart, it's not all covered in grease. And then on the back piece, we had the wood bushings. When I took them out, I had one that was still good, which is this one. And then I had a second set made. Um, a friend of mine who does woodworking made these for me. I believe they're oak. And he just used the other ones for a template. I'll grease these up real good on both sides and we'll use those on the other end. And these just go in the same way as the other the steel ones. Slide one in on the bottom. And get it in there straight. There you go. Slide one in on the top, just like that. We'll put our washer on, and then we'll get our crown nut again. We'll get that to where it lines up right with the hole. Um, if this doesn't line up right, the easiest thing to do is tap the other end with a sledgehammer and move that axle out and then take a wheel off. There's no way you're going to slide all these wheels down if it doesn't work right. So uh, you do have to spend a little time with it. And ideally, when you got it all together and the wheels all together, what you want to do is have them every other like that, so they roll in the middle of each other. It's a little off right here yet, so we got to move this back end out a little bit, and slide all these wheels over. Got all four in place and the bearings in, cotter pins holding everything in place. Next thing we do is we put the grease end cap on. I always put a little form of gasket around it just on the seal like that. Helps keep the grease in, keep the water and dirt out. Make sure you put the grease fitting up. That'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. And you'll notice that there's a little gap in the ears right here. If you crank on this too hard you'll snap that off and this is cast and that makes it difficult to weld. So when you put this on I always put them in finger tight and then you're going to want to tighten the top and the bottom evenly just till it's tight. Don't crank on it because they will break off. Better look at that gap. right there. All right we've got the caps on both ends and we're ready to start putting the arms in. You can see the shape of this right here. Kind of slides right in and goes like that. And then it's got this bushing right here that goes right through here and that's what it hinges on. Slide that in. And then it's got two washers, you can see them here, and they got grooves on the back 
and there's slots right in here. So once we get our bolt, that bolt locks right into there like that. And then that locks right in place like that. And then there's another one for the other side. And once those are both in, then that's what this hinge is on. And then it's also got this right here, that if you need to lock this, you can put a bolt in here, and it'll go right in that groove, and it'll lock it just straight up and down like that. Otherwise, when you're going through the field, you want it to be able to rock back and forth, so if you hit a bump in the front, it'll move up and down. If you had it locked in when you were going through the field and you hit something in front, you could bend the tongue or it bounce it off the ground and you don't want to do that. Okay, we've got the end pieces all set. Um, now we can start putting the frame on. A lot of these will have the drill pattern in where your support brace will come on an angle up to the tongue so you got to make sure you put the close ones in the front and the farthest ones in the back but on this Dunham they've got the holes drilled on both pieces so you can't uh, really mess this one up you just use the wide hole for the back and the close hole for the front and it's already centered. I got some carriage bolts here um, the holes are all square in the frame so it works good to just slide the carriage bolt in into that square hole and then that locks it right in place right there. If you use a regular hex head then you got to get another wrench to hold it to keep it from spinning on you. And just like everything else I just put everything finger tight that way I can square it all up and make sure it's all going to work before I get everything tight. Well that's always a good sign. Everything's lining up. I can get everything finger tight. And you can't get that last bolt in. That's where you run into trouble. Next we'll put the tongue on. The tongue is just two pieces of angle iron that's been welded together. Square bolt holes in it. carriage bolt it's got the square right around the base and back in the day when they made all this stuff they made all the holes square when the carriage bolt goes in there it doesn't turn you don't need a second wrench We'll just snug everything up finger tight again. I'll grab the support braces. Got the support brace here. You can see this is bent. Hopefully you can see that. Um, what this does is it goes underneath this part, but then it bends up and goes on top here. So we'll try to put her back in just the way it was. All right, everything's together, everything lined up. I just need to put the coupler on the tongue before I can fasten those last two support brace bolts. That coupler goes right underneath there. And then uh, we'll put the square on it. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there. 
I'll pump it full of grease and we'll run it for a little while and I'll put some more grease in it again and we should be ready to go. And everything is done and tightened up.